Hi, I'm Dr. Parthanandi, gastroenterologist and creator and host of the internationally syndicated medical lifestyle television show, Ask Dr. Nandi. Now today we're talking about EBUS or endobronchial ultrasound, which is a minimally invasive procedure used in the diagnosis of lung cancer, lung infections, and other diseases that cause enlarged lymph nodes or masses in the chest. Dr. Stephen Galens, clinical assistant professor at Oakland University's William Beaumont School of Medicine, will join us to demonstrate an EBUS procedure using Fujifilm's EB 530 EUS ultrasound bronchoscope. Welcome back. When we left you, we were talking about EBUS or endoscopic bronchial ultrasound, and Dr. Galens is kind enough to join us. And Dr. Galens, tell us about this, this EBUS. Uh, we have one here, if you could maybe show it to us and, and tell us a little bit about it. It's a very nice uh, bronchoscope. This is the Fuji model of the EBUS, and it uh, incorporates the elements of the standard bronchoscopy, which is basically a video camera at the end of the uh, scope that's about as thick around as a pencil. The, uh, the camera and the detail on this is remarkable. Uh, looking back at the screen there, we can actually see the outline of your finger and without the light shining on it, it's actually quite detailed. And uh, this is the the light source and the lens on, on this tip here. That's pretty cool. And then just beyond that is the ultrasound probe, which extends beyond the camera, but with this scope, what's very nice is that you can actually see what's in front of you. What's in front of you, and you can see the tip of the ultrasound and where it's going. So are we watching the television monitor? Are people, are they awake gagging and coughing when they have this done, or what's going on? For this procedure, people are generally given an anesthetic, and and they're, they're out, they're sleeping. So what we see on the screen is not what they're gonna see. So most people are, are, are sleeping and they're comfortable and also stable, because when they're, they're not moving or they're uncomfortable, it makes it easier for you to do the job quickly. And so I think that's great. So show us maybe a little, we've got a, obviously doesn't have a patient, but we've got a, a model here. Maybe you can right. go through how we do that procedure. Absolutely, I will. Give it a try. All right. Uh, so typically, when we do this procedure, there the patient uh, we can usually either go through the nose or the mouth. But okay. for this demonstration, we'll go through the mouth. And what we're seeing here is the back of the throat. Nice. That's the uvula. It's a nice picture. It is a nice picture, and and that's the epiglottis. And those white band-like structures are the vocal cords. Right here. Yeah, the vocal right cords. There. So we generally want to get up above them, and then once we get through, it generally goes in easier. So this is, we're talking about the trachea of the patient, right? That's correct. So yeah. this, was, this nice. is what the inside of the trachea would look like. Okay. And uh, the trachea is basically a long tube with cartilage rings in it. Connects you into your lungs, right? Connects right to the lungs. And so as you go down, the, the division point there, you can sort of get a sense. Right here. Is, is the uh, right and the left main stem bronchi. And generally we will go down below that, take a look around, make sure everything looks okay, and then we'll come back and try to find our lymph nodes with the EBUS. Okay, Let's, can we show them maybe an image of sure. what an EBUS would be? Right at the top of the screen is uh, what is supposed to be a lymph node. Correct. And it has a round structure, and, and it normally would be darker inside than the surrounding tissue. And uh, we would try to find these lymph nodes, and I'll see if I can find another example that looks a little bit more discreet, like that. Yeah. So we'd come up to these lymph nodes, and then... People at home are saying, I can see that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and then we would figure out a way to biopsy them. Perfect. Now, how do you biopsy? Now, you have this biopsy set up. It seems like people say, well, you got this little tiny scope. How do you put a biopsy through? Maybe you can show us. Sure. Can I help you? Yeah, absolutely, please. So the, uh, the biopsy is really with a needle aspiration, and Dr. Nandy's inserting the uh, sheath inside of the working channel of the bronchoscope and securing it in place. Okay. And then at the end of the scope, you can usually see the catheter sheath come out. There it is. There you go. And so you're actually having this through the inside of the scope and actually coming out and taking a sample. That's right. And the, the catheter sheath is just a piece of plastic that protects the scope from the needle. Uh, so we, we want to make sure that the needle is completely outside of the scope. And then we want to find our lymph node again. And what, what, what the idea is that before we did this, before we had this technique, I mean, it would be very difficult to do these biopsies. I mean, it, it would be very invasive. 
And so now, I mean, it, this makes it so much easier. The old-fashioned way would have been to make an incision just above the sternal notch and have a surgeon put a scope down, and that was a... How far we've come, huh? Yeah. I mean, it's so invasive. Think about having somebody cut on you instead. That's right. You go through the same opening that exists and do these biopsies. You know, this is great. I'm, I'm glad you showed us a little bit of this, and I think that when, when you're at home and you're, you're watching, it's not for everybody. Ask your doctor, and it should be guided by experts and your physician. So, Akins, thank you so much. That was very helpful. Thanks for taking the time very to really show, yeah, show folks a really an important technique. And that was pretty cool, so I, I appreciate that. Thank you.